purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. Welcome to Cash Daddies. We're banking fatties. We are back. Uh, You know, our boy Johnny Woodard was seeing the world. Well, he's back. He's ready to rock. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. uh, Let's get into this. Howie, uh, how was your week? It's good week. Good week. We're freaking turning and burning, man. This uh, uh, Fed came out yesterday, said they may lower rates three times. Market is skyrocketing right now. Uh, I think it will come back, but it's up. It's up today, brother. It is up today. Nice. Uh, how are you doing, Johnny? I I am thrilled. Uh, Bitcoin is still, you know, mostly up. Uh, although it's funny. Uh, what was it the other day? How he sent us a a text when it was. The, it, I mean, just uh, it was the, the, It's a rough ride. You. It's a rough ride. Yeah. I mean, there there are days when, when I mean you can lose. <laughs> so if you if you really take it day by day, you you can lose your mind. Uh, yeah, it went from seventy three to sixty two in about fifteen minutes. Or isn't that? I mean, uh, what is that? It, it's crazy, right? You yeah. went, I I thought maybe when the when the institutional investors came in and we started getting real money involved, that we wouldn't see as much of that. But it still it still happens. It still happens. Yeah. I I don't know how yeah. to account for it. Oh, it's uh, crypto is just it's, it's getting wild a little bit. Um, All right. Well, I'm in, dude. I'm in. You know, we're going to so talk about crazy. that later. We got to talk about this with, with crypto. Yeah, we got James, the crypto kid coming on. He's going to tell us about getting in on some of this crypto real early, dog. That's what I like. Real early. I need it. Just, just to say, I'm, I'm going to and I'm going to leave it right here. But we're going to say, look, to the people who have been listening to this from the beginning. This is what I tell you to not believe the general population. It's better to be a contrarian and do your own research and just think on your own. Because you remember, Sam, a year and a half ago, every hex tard in the world said that we are idiots. We don't know what we're talking about. This is the greatest. And then, and I, I, I well, called, I mean, technically, they were right in a weird I, way. We are. I idiots. said, there's no way. There's no fucking way. That what you're doing is honest. It's impossible. And they're talking, no, you got to stake it. 5,000 will be 2 million in three years. Dude, Hex has gone. In in the last year, it's down 98%. How are you down? nine? How is anything down 98% in a year? I mean, it's trading. Remember, it used to be at a penny. Now it's yeah. at 0026. You know? Yeah, I mean that's like that Boeing guy. He he's he that's the only person I know who's down ninety eight percent. That Boeing guy who got suicided, he's down a hundred percent. But <laughs> to be more than ninety eight percent is really tough. I mean that's I mean, that's rough. You, I mean all these people, all these fucking Richard Hart bankrupted so many trailer parks in Florida. <laughs> like just put them under. <laughs> I mean, this okay. guy's okay. Okay, we got people who love crypto. You, you were right. Let's get into the stock market. My Uber's doing well. Uber's up to eighty. It's just you know, it just keeps nice. going. Nice. Um, anyone that asks, look, what's one stock I should dollar cost average in and put it in my IRA or anything? Uber. That's I mean, exactly what I've been doing too, Howie. On your suggestion, I've been buy it because in five, that's one in five years. Uh, you know, you can safely say uh, it's probably going to double or triple. They're getting into everything. It's just a great company. They're fucking ma- they're making so much money. Um, they're making so much money. Why don't you marry it? I would marry an Uber. It's a nice car. It was a beautiful car. I could sleep in. Do you, in- do you think this helped the stock when the uh, guy was picking up a chick in Chicago and she set him up to get robbed and he just took off with her in the car? Wait, what now? Explain that again. Do you see that? <laughs> no, no. Crazy is it, video. It's a video? Oh, okay. Hold he on. orders an Uber, basically setting him up to get robbed. And Wait, so who's doing the robbing? Though, in, so he I don't understand. The gas. He takes off quicker than the guys could get out there. They start shooting at the car. She's in the car laughing because she's like, oh, God, I'm fucked. That's Chicago's wild, man. Yeah, it's it's by wild, you mean retarded, right? It's Chicago, you said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Chicago is uh, 
that Uber step. app used to rob six rideshare drivers. I don't see a video. Sorry. Oh, there's a vi dude. There's a crazy ass video. You still got to be careful with Lyft and Uber and those things. You know, you don't know where they're gonna take you. you don't yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it. I, I think about it every time. That's why I try to walk everywhere. The fewer interactions with strangers, you know, the less my risk, baby. That's how I see it. I Stay at you. home. Lock yourself in your bedrooms, people. Yeah, I'm outside of New York. I that's Johnny I wears a mask indoors by himself, by the, <laughs> by the way. Everybody. Hey, man, I don't know how, you know, my own air could be contaminated. I don't know. I <laughs> that's so keep... true, Johnny. That's yeah, what I've Johnny, said about you a thousand times, by the way. You're facing sheetrock. You got to wear a mask. Um, dude, I did what else see you that looking on at? Twitter. What else you looking at? Is, I, I think the Wi-Fi might be contaminated. I, I think I'm gonna have to get rid of my Wi-Fi, dude. I keep seeing more shit about it. it worries me. Well, how? Well, so, what are you gonna use to do this show? Just gonna plug. I mean, I, I'm hardwired right now for the show because Wi-Fi. I wouldn't. I don't. I got way some Wi-Fi be bags from you from our EMF rocks. Guys. I need to put. I need. Do you have a Wi-Fi condom, Sam? Because I could use that. I think. I just need. Uh, I just dude, wanna... are you saying your 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 girlfriend's fucking? Magic. No, I'm I just don't, I want to protect Radiation. my dick. Really, I want to protect everything in my my crotch region. I think from Wi-Fi or radiation. Yeah. All right. So, should we get into this interview, dude? Should we get into the interview? Let's do it. All right. Let's go. Let's, let's go. This is our interview with James, the Crypto Kid. Hey guys, I want to tell you about our friend James Fan and Copy My Crypto. Has it pissed you off to watch crypto fly up in price? for over a decade and you still have done nothing about it it makes sense it totally makes sense crypto is complicated and it's really boring well we're here well here's the good news okay you don't need to know a thing about crypto to make the money so many have the copy my crypto.com membership site shows you the exact cryptos a youtuber james mcmahon personally owns which means you just copy him. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply copy along. So let me tell you about James. He runs the Crypto with James YouTube channel, which has over 54,000 subscribers. In the summer of 2020, he told his viewers to buy 26 cryptos. Had you put $100 into each one, it went on to be worth over $123,000. Of the 26 cryptos, his top pick of the year, the one he singled out called Phantom, went up 692 times from when he said. That one alone has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify for yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then pause what you're doing and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash Sam, S-A-M. You'll not only find the proof of everything I've said, but my viewers get full access for just $1. Yes, you've missed out on Bitcoin, but there's over 2 million other cryptos. Do you really think you've missed out on all of them? Guys, don't waste any more time. Go to the site and read it. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. It's ended money worries for so many. It may just do the same for you. All right, guys, we're in it. All right. I'm uh, very excited to have this guest on. I've known him for a very long time. He's worked with us on Punch Drunk, and now he's kind of my crypto insider. Uh, we're going to be starting to do a lot of stuff with him, trying to get you two guys into it. I'm going to put together a big text thread of all my people. James Durian, how are you, buddy? Sam, thank you so much for having me on today. It's a, it's a pleasure, as always, to see you and the guys. I'm uh, if, Pardon the background information. Uh, I'm in Hawaii. I'm on uh, Waikiki Beach right now. So. Oh, nice. Here, this, is like, this is like one of those pop-up ads on YouTube, you know, where the guy's like, I'm just here with my nice Ferrari. W would you hey, like man. to learn about financial investing? Johnny. All right, so so James, uh, you and I, and I've also hooked you up with my good friend Mike Romanelli from the from the Dojo of Comedy in New Jersey. Uh, you got us going deep in the guts of crypto. Uh, you have a plan. Nice. I've been called the Crypto Jesus. You Let's are Crypto in. Jesus, Sam Tripoli. You've been, you Jesus. Crypto Jesus. What been called Crypto Jesus. What been called Crypto Jesus? Shut up, Howie. Let what him, does let that him. mean? Let, Why him is Trump, let me, let me explain. Let me, gentlemen, let Shut me explain. Shut up. Let him Please. explain. Let me explain. Please. 
Howie, Howie, I, <laughs> listen, I, I love and respect all the picks you make. You can you can print on the stock market, buddy. But there's a reason why they call us dumb money on the uh, on the stock market. If you watch the movie GME or uh, Dumb Money, uh, where they explain the GME situation, it kind of yeah. encapsulates the value of what cryptocurrency is at its essence. When you decide to give your investment capital to a hedge fund or to a stockbroker, your money has relatively little value comparative to the market capitalization of those projects. Um, the total market uh, total market cap for cryptocurrency right now is about two trillion dollars. The total market cap for Apple is three trillion. Yeah. So quite sure. simply, quite simply, your dollar has more value in this marketplace. Second of all, we are talking about the future of money, not the past of money. The future of money is digital. I can sell my cryptocurrency at any time, at any place, and convert that to any other cryptocurrency or fiat currency I want at any time. I have to wait for the markets to open to close an account or open a position. Um, that's not the way the world works anymore. It's a digital mm -hmm. age. It's a digital space. And money is digital. Also, the fact that your fiat currency can print you out of existence and your assets are not tethered to anything that has a relative value that's going to increase over time. We all, I mean, it, the writing's on the wall, gentlemen. So if you want to keep putting your money into things that don't care about what your relative value is to them, that's great. Our strategy is quite, quite simple. Every cryptocurrency that you see on a central exchange started as a microcap. It was the community that rallied around them and the belief that this is the project, and not one project, but a series of projects that have great value to the blockchain. Right, but let me now just let me... stop you right there. Hold oh, on. Okay. Hold on, because we got to get back to reality here. <laughs> you're, say you're saying every... You don't know who crypto... You don't know the power of crypto Jesus, Howie. I'm you don't know me, Howie. No, no, I, know you. Crypto Jesus. I know you. I heard... Howie, I'll let you go, but I've got a lot more to say, so go ahead. I've heard you. Yeah, we heard you. We heard you crying about Celsius for a year and a half, crypto Jesus. I, never, so I don't... I, and I'll tell you this. I'll tell you never to hold your assets on a central exchange. All of Sam's yeah, assets yeah. are right now held on a private wallet that right. no central exchange has hold, a control over. That's, if you're holding your assets on a central exchange, you're stupid. Yeah. So don't well, do that. Get, off, offload back. your assets to a cold wallet or offload your assets to a smart wallet. It's well, very simple. If you hold your thing. assets, if you're holding your assets on a central exchange, you deserve to get fucked. Right. Uh, we we Sam knows that now. Um Hey, I deserve <laughs> to get fucked. Yeah, Sam knows that. But look, no, the bottom line is this. You're that's well and fine. Look, we're talking about a Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is going really a different way learn. than hold on, Howie. I understand what you're saying. You both are pretty, okay? I just want to say you're both pretty. Listen, Howie's got Howie's great at, at stocks, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of value in that. James is great at crypto, and there's a lot, a lot of value. There's no reason why they can't get along. James, I want to get right to it. No, but listen, we, stop. We got to get back to Jesus Christ. Listen. Hey, don't take my name in vain, bro. No, we got to stop right now. <laughs> Look, because, well, James made a point. James made a valid point, and he said every single, uh, every coin that you see right now that is trading, you know, coins like Ethereum, uh, whether whether it's Solera, Chainlink, whatever, you're right. They all start off at a micro cap, but I want to. I got to stop you just because we all know. I think the percentage is it's above ninety. The of all crypto that did start is now trading below par. In other words, it's worthless. Only a few of these made it. Okay, okay, Howie, so that's we understand I get back that, to. bro. Okay. Thank you, Howie, walking into the Christmas party, telling oh, all the said, children Santa isn't real. About, we got about, you. Okay. About risk. Yeah, but listen. Okay, yes. So I want to make a disclaimer. What we're going to talk about right, right here is very risky. But if you want to dance that dirty dance, yeah. uh, come with us, okay? Because you, it. you oh, have yeah. to. You have to be. You cannot, as we say in the opening, do not be. Do not risk more than you can risk, okay? Just don't do that. 100%. But yeah, 100%. what James's plan is, is like, I love it when a plan comes together and it's exciting, okay? So let's just hear what James has to say. Let's hear it. And everyone, you can decide whether you want to participate in it or not. Sam, thank you so much. Um, Howie, I understand what you're saying, and I, I believe that the stock market is a valuable tool for people, who, for investors who have enough money to have a, uh, to have to see a real return on their investment. But it's one of those things. Like it's the same reason I, I'm not really telling people to invest in Shib or anything in the top twenty. If you really want to get rich, 
because your return on investment for your market, uh, for your capital to the market cap is relatively limited. Now, what I'm proposing is I have identified six micro caps that all have the potential to go to a CEX listing within the next two to three years, given that the community can rally around and make the world aware of what the, the power of the cryptocurrency. Bla Howie, before I go any further, let me just explain to you in depth what A, the blockchain is and why what crypto is on, at its essence, because a lot of people don't understand that. And that because people have a fear of something they don't understand, they automatically think it's, it's fake or bullshit. And, and there are some things that are fake and bullshit on the blockchain. But the blockchain is very simple. It makes one thing. It does one thing. It records transactions. Everything else is a marketing overlay. I've been in marketing for almost 30 years now. So I have an, an intuitive understanding of seeing what the words mean relative to what the project is. Now, Howie, in the, in the cryptocurrency space, we only have two types of projects outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they are utility plays, meaning that your token has some type of functionality on the blockchain, or they are meme plays, meaning that it's nothing. It's a picture that goes up. Yeah. So all these cryptocurrencies started that way. Whether it's a utility or meme, they all started that way. And it was people saying, I believe that this is the meme, or I believe that this is the cryptocurrency that's going to take it to the next level, to go from micro to major cap. In, in 2024, we're starting to see a conglomeration of utility and meme plays come together. And it's kind of fascinating because cryptocurrency is a 24-7 endeavor. And you're going to start to see real uh, communities formed around some of these projects. And in particular, the first one I've recommended to Sammy, GPU, has gone from a million dollars in micro cap to an all-time high of almost two, 200 million. It's currently, I, I haven't checked the, the markets, I think it's at like 100 million right now. Uh, the holder count, I think, is at 18,000. So we're, we're talking a holder count of less than 20,000 people on the earth of 200, of, of two, of 8 billion. A market cap that's maybe that's fluctuating from 90 to 120 million dollars in, in a consolidation range as new holders come on. This project is a revenue share token that enables you to stake the token on their website and take in uh, a portion of their revenues that they're taking from selling GPUs that they source from NVIDIA. So, Howie, the, this is the future of how companies are starting to promote themselves over a stock. It's giving themselves a cryptocurrency. They make money by doing a tax on transactions. They most good teams don't hold any tokens. So they're not their incentivization is not to pump and dump, but to create a lasting project that has an enduring legacy and solves issues on the blockchain. Because How there do you are know issues which ones on the blockchain. not a pump and dump and which one's real because 90% of them were pump and dumps. Exactly. And Howie, that's where my skill set as being a marketer helps because I can I can look at information in a rapid set in a rapid setting. You to get a sub million uh, entry is is rare. You need to, you're trying to get a sub one million entry on every project because your dollar has the most purchasing power at sub one million. So I'm constantly scouring the data, constantly looking at all at listing at all this information. I'm constantly sorting information, looking at stuff. But I've also finished that process. I'm not looking to enter any new projects. The goal is to now put these six projects that I believe in to Valhalla, as we like to say. So I'm no longer looking for new projects. I'm not interested in entering anything. Here's the thing. People see a green dildo going up on a chart, they get wrecked. The key, if you want to be if you want to be simple in crypto, buy on red, sell on green. You'll make money all till the day is done. But the key is not to... I, I want to caution investors to try and do that. The I've gone on my crypto.com account looked at things that if ha had I just held for three years, I'd be far richer. But because I was trying to be smooth and quick and make a quick, the key is to buy and hold. Forget you even own the asset. The price action is addictive, but don't pay attention to it. The, the key I is to ride out the, the things, cycle. But, if you, but my point is, if you bought and hold on 90% above or on crypto three years ago, you'd be broke now. That, yeah, and, and that's because you're investing in major caps that are listed on central exchange. I'm I'm talking about buying into projects that in most cases are less than three million dollars in market cap with less than less than a thousand holders on earth. That's what I'm talking about. And projects that have a real community behind it who just have no attention to it because the market's infatuated with these pump and dumps that you know the, here's what's going on in crypto right now for everybody that's uh if you're not if you're not trading on a central exchange, if you're on the decentralized exchange scene, Solana has become the shitcoin central. 
You can literally make a million dollars on a shit coin on Solana in a day, but it's completely roulette. There's no, there's no meta. So meta is investor narrative. Okay. A project has an investor narrative. If it's a if it's a meme token, there is no investor narrative. Motherfucker, that's a, a, a picture. It's going to go up or go down. Are you with us? But utility tokens, that's what the serious investors are all about. And there's a thing called mind curving, which is we we as the investors who like to think we're smart, we, we like we're looking for utility and function on the blockchain. But what happened when the bull market hit? When that last that first bull pump hit, when Bitcoin hit 72, memes flew through the fucking roof because people are stupid. Average people is, are dumb. They just want a number that's go up. They don't want to do a lot of research. They see a cute picture. It's going up. Let's buy it. So I have two cute picture projects, Snappy the Dragon and Gnome. But those are GameFi. It's a mix of MemeFi and GameFi. What is GameFi? GameFi is the token that you have acts as a currency within the, si within the ecosystem of the video game. So now that has a real world value a real world utility mixed in with a token that has the ability to bring uh, uh dumb money in because it's cute and that is what we're starting to see the new trend of the meta in the crypto space or the investor narrative can we mix together these utility and meme uh metas and create something that has a real value that's going to last and endure to central exchange listings every project that i've listed howie could go from 1 million to 100 million. And I have evidence in that that GPU, which I bought at 1 million, is now currently at 100 million. So my ability to see, predict, and understand the value of what a, a future project is has been validated, as well as picking other crypto. I mean, I can pick cryptos to the day or long. I've got central exchange listings. I just think that for our listeners, the ones who want to be Jedis, the ones who want to follow Crypto Jesus, Sam Tripoli, to Valhalla, this is our best bet. But if you want to play it safe, Give me a day. I'll come up with a bunch of plays on a central exchange where your risk I mean, you to rate will lower risk your You can buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. Hey, which, hey, which, hey, which Joe, Howie, a hundred percent. If you want a safe investment in cryptocurrency, say dollar cost average buy Bitcoin, dollar cost yeah. average Ethereum. A hundred percent. The wild great west advice. days are but back. I want to get Howie. fucking. Yeah, Sammy, you you don't get you don't turn yeah, hundred to a million that way. While everything's you going know? up, hex has actually gone down. I don't even know. It's like zero. I don't, yeah, how is that? How is let me explain to you all from those, a different all the time, the top bro. 20 are bullshit. No, it, there's no community that's rallying the flag around them the way we're gonna be rallying the flag around GPU, yeah, dude, snappy, gnome, drops. I, I gotta pull out my list. I've got two others, but and I, I'm on vacation, so I haven't really been tuned into the markets. Normally, I'm glued in, guys, but I'm, I'm a little tuned out. I've, I've been celebrating, I've been you know, enjoying life, but I get back. And Howie, I'll let you know something, bud. I spent 20 or 30 years being a high-level cannabis broker. I wrote a book about it. I'm looking to get signed by WME as, a, as an author. I got a second book that I'm writing. It's about cryptocurrency. None of what I'm going to be teaching our audience, the decentralized exchange, Ethereum swaps to get in early position is what I'm writing about because I would yeah. not advise the general public to do this type of investment. This is for you people who have vision and the ability. Go ahead. When you say GPU, it's not GPU I N U. No, that's G. That see, and I thank you, Howie. You, see, you're Howie, illustrating something. You don't know shit. Yeah, no, no, mother, this, because half uh, the people will be buying that dumbass. Howie, you, Howie, you're going to bankrupt Howie, half our Howie, listeners. Howie, Howie, that, thank you for pointing that out. In in cryptocurrency, when you have a project that's successful, you're going to have a bunch of other projects that try and steal the meta or the investor narrative to glom on to newbies who don't know what they're doing. That's why. Sam is crypto Jesus. I am going to give you the right information. I am not Sam Tripoli. I'm not famous. I'm a former drug dealer. I'm honest about who I am. I used to you, do you, drugs. Yeah, there you go. But I used, I was, Howie, I was the guy back in the, in the mid 2000s. If you needed 100 pounds of pot at, that were trading at anywhere between the, uh, five to six thousand dollars in the city of San Francisco and going out of state and those were trading for 10 to 15, I was the guy you called. Nice. Now, now, now there, now there's weeds legal everywhere. There's no demand for my skill set. I'm happy to tell my story and and segue into podcasting and being an author and advising people how to, in, how to enter into the financial revolution, Howie, which is what cryptocurrency is. It's a financial revolution. Look, at, I believe in the stock market fundamentally for people who have a certain amount of wealth. My mom loves stocks. It's a great yeah, investment. But not, you tool. don't have to have a certain amount of wealth. You can be a 21 year old kid for giving in your 401k, you could, getting eight hey, you could, percent a year. Hey, and and how we look at it. Depending on your risk profile, I will always advise certain people to invest in stocks because this is not for everybody. 100. percent 
But if you have the vision, the time, and also the network to bring people in, because cryptocurrency is about community. At its essence, it's do we believe this project has value to others? Because when you believe a project has value to others, you, you share that belief. And I'm not advising people to invest in any other projects except for the ones that I have thoroughly vetted at a micro cap level that I've done research around and have brought other investors that are savvy. Like CoinForge and Free, my two artificial intelligence projects that are sitting at less than $2 million market caps with less than a thousand holders on chain. A guy who was buying Bitcoin at 40 entered it because well, I, I'm friends with him on Twitter. Me. Yeah, so you gotta give us you gotta give us these so we can look them up. F give it to me. Free. FR33, FR33, FR33. That's an artificial intelligence age, uh, it's got uh, algorithm that's for, yes, which makes the cash tag hard to find. So it's a hashtag. But if you were to go to a, if you were to look up, well, FR33, hold on, dude. I mean, dude, this is the beauty of James. James sends you, uh, a, something to copy and paste and bang, you're there, dude. Yeah, because I don't see everybody. Wallet. So everybody, it, let me tell your listeners right now. Please follow me on Twitter. It's th three crypto kid. My old account, Mister Three MMA, got nuked because I was actually calling out a faulty project on Twitter, and the development team called me out. That's the thing, bro. I'm not. I will not invest in a pump and dump. If the minute I find out something's a fraud, I'll call it out. So, crypto is a very legitimate space. There are a lot of illegitimate actors. If your listeners want advice, any information, I'm happy to provide it. That's my job. This is. I truly believe at a, at a spiritual level, this is how we come together as humans to combat the darkness that is central banks. The central banks hate cryptocurrency because they can't print crypto. Yeah, but, but we they can, own we, it all now. No, no. The no, they only, own it. they only own Bitcoin, which is why Ethereum is of and great Ethereum, value. They own a shitload of Ethereum. They own a ton of Ethereum. But, but they don't own Snappy. They don't own GPU. They don't own Gnome. They don't own CoinForge. They yeah, don't own Yeah, but if you look Drop, at the whole market cap, the whole free. market cap across cryptocurrency, they probably own more than 50% of it now. Okay, but Howie, and I agree there that as the markets have grown, Howie, you are correct. There has been more institutional investment at a higher level, but that just gives me more consumer confidence that they see this as the future. So I'm just trying to get our listeners rich in three years. That's yeah, my goal. Yeah, dude. This is not, and that's the other thing, Howie. I'm not promising you in a week you're going to be rich. I'm not telling you that. This is work. The work is you, you get in position. You, you tell the people that have a high risk profile that see the value in entering this work. That's what makes Sam Crypto Jesus. I'm going to get Sam on Sean Kelly's podcast. This guy's got 12 million followers on Instagram, 100 a million people on uh, YouTube. Sam and, and Sean about are about it. to become friends. Sam, come on, buddy. It may, be friends with this guy even if even, it, it, friends are good no dude and, I'm joking I'll go on he's got a great podcast and, and and my buddy Derek is starting a crypto uh, a crypto project called Keats 2 he's trying to bring me in as the creative director I'm trying to get my 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 book situation lined in I got some weed company stuff I've got to deal with but Derek's opening a, a members only club in August 6th I'm sure Sean's gonna be there I'm trying to get Sammy out there I'm gonna go to Vegas for it that's what I'm saying is like Howie, this is bigger than me just saying, hey, buy this. No, we're going to, it's all about attention. Do you understand that there's cryptocurrencies that have gone to a billion dollars because a guy named Paul, okay, Pepe. Pepe went to a billion dollars because a guy with 20,000 followers said, hey, I think this is a really cool project. He was not Sam Tripoli. That's what Who I'm is? saying. Pepe, I sent you guys. Why, why should the investment increase have to do with the amount of followers you have? That, that kind of confuses me. Because people, because attention, attention and interest. Okay, I, listen, I, I, you two guys are both pretty. Listen, I want to get into something real quick because we don't have a lot of time. You know, I spent, I spent, well, I spent way too much money on. Okay, real quick. What's up, buddy? I want to get into something. Get to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I, I, you know, again, my friend Mike Romanelli, myself, we're in a little tax thread with James. James is telling us all the different things that he is um, investing in. Would we like to maybe get into what are some of the projects that you are working on right now or things give, to get the ball rolling here on what people should be looking into? Okay. So let, let me go down the checklist really quickly. And Howie, the only one of these that I know for sure you'll be interested in is GPU. But I, Howie, I'm telling you, 
get position in GPU. And let me, I'm going to explain GPU right now really quickly. And what's the symbol? That's the main thing. Hash, the cash tag is GPU. The project is called Node AI. If you were to go look up Node AI, you will find it. What these guys are doing is they're, it's a decentralized, so D-pin. Okay, the three investor metas or narratives that are hot for this cycle outside of what memes are, are game finance, artificial intelligence, and D-pin. D-pin is a decentralized asset where it's essentially cloud assets where you, you, you remove a, a focalized, uh, a focal base real world point and everything's done on the cloud kind of thing. So Node AI does a deep in selling of GPUs to artificial intelligence companies. So it's a, re it's a rev share token. Node AI went from a million dollars in market cap to an all-time high of $189 million. I think we're back to about one. We're ranging between, a, we're consolidating in a range of 90 to 120 as new holders come on. Like I said, less than 20,000 holders on Earth, Howie. Uh, this is a rev share token, so you don't even have to ever worry about selling the project. If you wanted to buy as much of it, put it on their website to stake, they're going to pay you in Ethereum to do that. So there's that's what we're starting to see. Is, and, and I would tell my mom to invest in GPU. I would tell anybody who has, because your risk profile doesn't matter, because this is a company in revenue that you can stake your, your token on asset and get revenue share in Ethereum back. So it's a it's a solid solid in revenue business that's that's capitalizing the blockchain to access information to their consumer base because the blockchain only does one thing it records transactions so they're recording the transactions of their consumer of their customers but they're incentivizing you to hold it by sharing the revenue of their company so it's a really solid product the guy the CEO took a picture with the the head of Nvidia at the Nvidia conference I've never been more confident in a cryptocurrency project that could go from one million to a billion. In a, in a year span than GPU. But it's, there's, it's on no central exchanges. You have to swap Ethereum for it. If you're going to swap Ethereum for it, I suggest you increase your slippage to, a, to the full increase your slippage because these are highly volatile assets and you're trying to enter into the blockchain at a certain time. So Howie, the only projects here that I'm really, I really would want you to invest in because I understand how serious you are about your investing is GPU. It is 100% a solid, solid company sitting at, let's put it like this, you're going to see a 10x when it goes from 100 million to a billion. So, you know, and, and a billion is, I, I say GPU is at a billion by the end of the year. I, there is no limit to what GPU can do because it's an in-revenue company with no central exchange listing. Once you get a Coinbase listing, your exit liquidity has been provided by a central exchange. And that's, here's the other thing, Howie. I'm not in telling people, I'm telling people also to create targets. I don't know what your target is for this, for this vehicle. Cryptocurrency is an amazing vehicle, but I would never advise somebody to hold past a certain target. If you have a number in mind that you see that you, this project can develop up for you, I would always somebody to de-risk position because if you close your position, that shit goes to the moon, you're going to have a heart attack. And you hear stories about that in cryptocurrency. A guy closes his position. The thing goes, I, I was talking to this one guy, a position closed, it did a 50, it went 1500% up the day after he closed the position. So you never want to fully close a position. You can reduce the position, reduce the position to 20% holding. If you want to take 80%, okay, leave, leave, it's called a moon bag, but you always want to leave some exposure in case that thing does something afterwards. But Howie, yeah, this I is agree. not saying you, I want, I want all our investors to get, to take profits, but to be, have exposure. I'm not telling people, put, and I'm also telling people not, don't put their life savings in this shit. I'm a former drug dealer. You know, I've been in jail. The vice president put me in jail a few times. I'm not, my risk profile is different than most people, <laughs> but I also know that, but I also know that if you want to win, you got to lose. And it, so if you're scared to lose, you won't win. So I'm not, I'm not trying to tell people to go be me, but hey, you want to win, you got to be willing to lose. But the risk to reward ratio on a lot of these projects because of the market cap to hold holder account. If you can wait three years, you're not going to lose. I'm not, if you need, if you put your rent money in, you're going to get fucked. But if you have investment capital that you can let ride, I can promise you, you're going to see some healthy return on investments if you can wait because it's a, it's a patience game. How we, it's a community and patience. You see these green dildos on these meme coins that have no utility and people think that's crypto and it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship to crypto the same way pump and dump penny stocks are, but it's not what the thing is. 
the, at its essence, it's us. It's the it's the revolution of money because we're just we're just counting transactions. That's all it does. Bit yeah. I like okay. Ethereum better right. than Bitcoin, so but listen, it's not first. Here's here here's what we're gonna do, James. We're gonna put your your Twitter uh in the bio. And if people listening want to hit you up, yep. they can do 100%. that and we can 100%. get it going. We'll have you back again because you got like six coins you want everybody to invest in. GP. Yes. Yeah. G GP. The first, look at if, if anybody does anything today, please look, just check out GPU. If it interests you and you want to know how to enter and it doesn't make sense, hit me on Twitter. But all right, uh, the James, one thing thank I would you. tell your we, listeners to do, just take a look. I know Johnny's GPU interested because it Maybe went from we'll a million dollars to market it. cap. I, hey, man, thank you so much for having me on, Sam. You are crypto Jesus. We will take your listeners. I am. Oh, wake I up, Howie. This. Okay, I'm Sam, crypto, Jesus. crypto Jesus. And well, but let me explain why, Howie. Let me explain why. And then I got These we gotta go because take, I gotta get to there. Oh, that's okay. Let me just, but let me explain why Sam Triple is, is crypto Jesus really quick. Thank you. Thank and you. I've known Sam for a very long time. And when Sam, yes. when we were doing Punch Drunk, Sam came together with a uh, tinfoil hat. And I thought Sam was fucking crazy. I am important. I was wrong. Sam was so fucking right about tinfoil hat and what tinfoil hat is. And what tin, what tinfoil hat has done for our country and for the world is amazing. I'm not, yes. I'm not, even, I'm not even being hyperbolic. The fact that it rocketed past Punch either. Drunk is wild to me. Because I thought Punch Drunk was an amazing, it still is an amazing podcast. But tinfoil hat captured something, okay? Sam has has the hearts and minds of people who are rebel rebels against the system, and at its essence, cryptocurrency is a rebellion at its of the system, which makes Sam crypto Jesus because Sam has a followers, a group of followers who are free minded and want to change the world. And how do you change the world? You change the world with money, Howie. It's I money that so changes important. the world, and crypto Thank is how you. you change the world. So Sam is crypto Jesus. I have dubbed Sam Thank Crypto you, Jesus. Sam is Crypto Jesus. He's going to take us all to Valhalla through his platform of Punch Trump, Tinfoil Hat, Cash. Daddy, how he either jump Twitter, on the bandwagon or get the fuck out. Okay? We're, how we, That's how, how we're doing we, We're going to print millions, buddy. Join all us. Right, man. We're going to yeah. print millions. Yeah. millions. All right, James. Yeah. We love you. James, I love you guys. I'll buy Trust some GPU. All right, guys. James. We love you, buddy. Links below. I love you guys. James is going to give you all the good shit. Enjoy Hawaii, buddy. Don't eat spam and watch out for the dog, the bounty hunter. All right, James, giving me my flowers that I so deserve. I am important. You're Jesus. You're a messiah. Yeah, I am crypto Jesus. You're no better than Jesus, really. our Lord. Okay. You're better than Jesus. Come on, Johnny, nobody's better than Jesus. The guy oh, okay. died for his sins. He didn't do anything. Okay? He's just hanging out. Try unless you listen, to, unless you listen to Ben Shapiro, who's like, did you hear Ben Shapiro? He's like, he was a rule breaker. He was breaking laws. Yeah, I, I, I want to punch that fucking guy <laughs> so badly. Well, you know who else I want to punch? That Dan Schneider guy from Nickelodeon. Who oh, have you seen? Oh God! Him? Oh, dude, that he's big, fat walking fuck. around. Yeah. How? He's just walking around. He's doing. He's got a YouTube channel. He's getting a, really but he's getting rid of all the comments. It's oh, crazy. God. Somebody's got to off that dude. Dude, I'm I, dude. I would honestly think about it. Not off him, but like just do some Krav Maga to his nuts for sure. Have, uh, have, guys, have you watched the doc? Is the doc is it good? No, but I don't need the doc. I've been hearing about this forever. Yeah, let's get I mean, into. I, well, I'm I'm it. From I don't know who it is. So what? let's talk about. Uh, yeah, the, you mentioned it, Howie. Uh, before we started recording the Reddit IPO, uh, they, it looks like they they had a range of what, like thirty one to thirty four. It's coming out at thirty four. Uh, what do you think uh, about that? It's up 38% right now. Is it already up 38%? Wow. I, it, it's funny. All the Wall Street bets crowd were, were really dogging this thing because they all hate the decisions that's read, that Reddit has made over the past year or so. But uh, yeah, what, How do you feel about it? Reddit here? used to be great. It used to be great. It's dog shit now. No, they, they just a, IPO. They made, so. they made hundreds of millions today, man. Um. This thing's just cranking right now. The symbol, if you want to look at it, it's R D D T. Um, not the best symbol, but no, it's uh, kind of a weird. Well, I guess that's Reddit, but yeah. it popped at thirty-four bucks a share. That's where it came out at, and uh, shit, it's at trading at forty-seven right now. Forty-seven. Wow. Yeah, well, I didn't see that coming. So I did not see that coming. Honestly, at forty-seven bucks. Let's see where it is right now. Um, 
I know a woman who made millions today because she works. Shit, it's at 50, 53 and a half. 53. Good Damn, God. Dude. It's up 57%. So if you're lucky to have an account at Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, UBS, Morgan Stanley, one of the big guys, you might have gotten a few shares of that. You know, you might have got 100 shares put in your account if you got a good broker. Um, Damn. So th yeah. what do you think? Because like Reddit, the, the only the only reason I see for this to be a, a successful company in the future is this idea that people now, when they're Googling things, they're appending the word Reddit to their Google searches because Google has become such bullshit layered upon bullshit that they just want answers from real people. So like, say you're looking for like the best restaurant in Detroit for whatever reason. People are now typing best restaurant in Detroit, Reddit, into their Google searches so that the Reddit results w related to that come up before any of the Google's normal bullshit like Quora and all that shit. That's that's the only hope I see because, I mean, it's just not... The website's not great. It's not well-designed. They pissed their, their hardest core uh, users off last year by fucking, uh, fucking companies and websites on data that that was a whole scandal. Uh so I don't I don't know, man. I I I could see that going back that coming down, but Yeah, they must think they have some good solid uh advertisers, advertising yeah. things in the future. I don't know. Yeah, I mean they did monetize their data. You know, all these there are a lot of websites that were using their data and apps apps were using their data. <laughs> and last year that was the big scandal. They started charging them for it, like a lot a lot of money and they put a lot of apps out of business. They just had to go out of business suddenly because they couldn't afford to pay Reddit. So I, I guess that was in preparation for this, you know, add, to make it look like they have, uh, well, you know, the, a lot of business on the books. But I, I don't know. It's, I don't like that. I mean, uh, you know, they uh, Reddit is a it's a well known name, but they've never made money yet. I mean, they still they're still in the red. They're not making money. So th this is all up on you know. People That's a funny thing, huh? That especially it seems like a Silicon Valley thing, especially, huh? Where you don't have to make yeah, money for be years, with and you, years and years. I, I think fucking the stock market's a giant giant Ponzi scheme. That's all I'm gonna say. What is the stock Nothing. market? I mean, in a sense, I get what you're saying in a sense, for sure. It's I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen stories about boycotts and all this stuff, and then then the then and then the the stock's up. I think it's just whatever yeah, the lizard yeah, people yeah, want. Name name a boycott in the history of this country that's ever worked. They don't work. That's that's a fact. Boycotts. Yeah, how about when uh, comedy crowds boycott your shows? Those work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think there are many. Let's see. History of successful boycotts. They don't it's work. a short list right here. Um, you can boycott uh, whatever you want. It, they, it, it never works. Yeah, like Air France would ban the transport of monkeys uh, after a PETA boycott. But I mean, that's not, I'm talking about like really big ones. I, uh, yeah, not much here, dude. It's all like little minor issues, but not like significant. They're always big for two or three weeks. Like, yeah, nobody's going to buy. Yeah. And then a year later, it's the top selling item, whatever it is, whatever they're boycotting. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it seems to be mostly right here. You got faith in boycotts? Why don't you take? T let's talk about Chevron and Exxon and BP. After BP, yeah, really killed it's a billion so, animals in the Gulf. That's so funny. Everybody, uh, the stock went up one hundred fifty percent. Yeah, it turns out when you have something that people have to buy, it doesn't matter how many people boycott it; the, they still buy it. That's right. That's right. I mean, that's just it's the way the world works, man. We're on a quick uh, turnaround here. How uh, Sam's got a bolt, so we want to uh, get to how he's picks. I think now, right? Yeah, I got to get to the airport. Duquesne is smacking BYU. Wow. Oh man, really? I have BYU in that game. I have them actually yeah. winning another round. I think in one. Eleven. Round. There's the eleven. Oh yeah, five eleven, dog. Dude, oh D. Yo, what's up? That's I kind of hope Mississippi left. State wins too because I want them. I think Carolina matches up better. These, against okay, State. so Johnny knows. I talk about this all the time. My two favorite times of the year, October and this 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 week. Yeah, yeah. love it. First round. The NBA basketball is heating up. The first two rounds of the NCAA tournament, favorite time of the year. 
chicks start wearing nothing, it's the best. I just need Carolina to make it to the Sweet 16 because they're going to be playing at Staples Center. I'm going to go. I'll might go with him. you. I'll might go. Oh, please come. They're going to have a rematch possibly with, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Caleb Love. They're a great point guard from last year and the years before. Uh, he plays for Arizona now. He was player of the year. And he's going to be possibly playing North Carolina in the Elite Eight. That would be a crazy game. That's right. Yeah. That's uh, And, they, you know, they, the NCAA likes to pretend like they don't line those things up. Dude, they, they do. They look. They look and try to set up narratives like that. The I'm liars. Getting the, I'm getting on the two train tomorrow. Headed over to Brooklyn. Watch a little Duke Vermont. Oh, that'll be a root for root for Vermont, please. Hell uh, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, hey. what what do you guys think about the NCAA? Boy, they seem to be really, really kind of fucked. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. with this NIL shit. Uh, like Patino, did you see Patino's trying to get all these old coaches on? Like he's trying to get Roy Williams, Mike Shashevsky on the selection committee because he's pissed off about. Uh, St. John's being left out, which I don't think well, he's got a leg to stand on. I don't blame him because whoever does a selection committee, dude, you're letting in teams like Virginia. They certain teams. Virginia had got shit housed. That Ugh. was a, they were they had fourteen points at the half. They're terrible, unbelievable, yeah. dude. Yeah, that how is that coach respect. still coaching, dude? I just you, like okay, you got how do you at this point so deep in your career? Not change your offensive philosophy. What do you mean? They just well, he's had recent, very recent success. He won what a national championship. Yeah, but dude, ago. dude, 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 dude. The guy has always had a tr problem scoring. It's it's just why no, they. No, I'm get with you, dude. I and I, I'm the harshest critic of Virginia. I've always that's said all that I'm saying. It's they like fuck obviously themselves you're in the tournament amazing at yeah. you're amazing at defense. Get somebody who gets you a running, gunning offense. But he won the thing. I mean, they won, dude. That's all yeah, you can hope for. Dude, Virginia I mean, is to like, win okay. like once a, so every 20 pick, years. Howie? Daddy's really got to go. I'm sorry, guys. Listen, some of you guys are going to be upset. I just wanted to get you guys an episode today because I know we missed out last week. We like to hang. We like to bang. But Daddy's got to grab a plane. Hey, the bottom line is, if you watch this show for the last year and you look at the 2024 portfolio, you will see that we bloated the shit out of XLF, the financial sector. And, uh, oh, my God, this thing from year to date, it's up from 37 to 42, paying a, almost a 2% yield. XLF, man, it's got a lot of room to go. It's like the oil sector was a couple years ago when we were cranking out on it, but I like it. I like it for our listeners. Uh, put it in your IRA. Be happy. Nice. XLF. All right, Sam. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy this. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.